I know this is what you've all been waiting on, the bloodthirsty savages of the West Indies. Imagine you're an innocent explorer, just out trying to make a honest living for you and your family. Only to have ruthless savages try to defend their homes, that you are trying to calmly claim for king and country. How dare they, savages. So cruel. The Kalinagos. Those cannibals. According to Columbus the original three-piece was a rib, leg and a thigh of the enemies. And we all know we can trust Don Columbus. That word savage. Of an animal or force of nature, fierce, violent, and uncontrolled. Or another word used by invaders when they want to do all manner of atrocities, but need to justify it to the masses. We spoke about the inhabitants of the Northern Caribbean islands, today we are going to venture south. The Kalinagos, also known as the Island Caribs or simply Caribs, are an indigenous people of the Lesser Antilles in the Caribbean. At the time of Spanish contact, the Kalinagos, similar to the Tainos, were one of the dominant groups in the Caribbean, which owes its name to them. They lived throughout Northeast and South America, Trinidad, and Tobago, Barbados, the Windward Islands, Dominica, and possibly the Southern Leeward Islands. The Kalinagos gained a reputation as warriors who raided neighboring islands. According to the Spanish conquistadors, the Kalinagos were cannibals who regularly ate roasted human flesh. There is evidence as to the taking of human trophies and the ritual cannibalism of war captives among both Caribs and other Amerindian groups such as the Arawak and Chupinamba. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room, the cannibalism. So by the Spanish accounts, per their observation and first-hand accounts of the Tainos. But really first-hand accounts of their sworn enemies. We all know someone who wouldn't waste an opportunity to shit on your name. And as for Columbus's account of cannibalism, it is believed that he played into the narrative, so that the King and Queen of Spain would grant him freedom to do what he wanted with them. The Spanish monarchy initially insisted that indigenous people be paid for work and treated with respect, but reversed its position after receiving reports that they refused to convert to Christianity and ate human flesh. Added to the fact that it worked in the favor of the Kalinagos at the time. I mean, I don't know about you, but, I would fear a group of mother whom were rumored to eat people. In all honesty, Caribs as savage cannibals is entirely based on colonial accounts, we know nothing about them except what the Europeans told us. The island Caribs mostly succeeded in resisting Spanish attempts to colonize their territories. They however couldn't resist the infectious diseases which caused widespread population decrease, introduced by European colonists. Diseases such as smallpox, which they had no natural immunity to, decimated their population. In the 17th century, the Kalinagos regularly attacked the plantations of the English, and the French in the Leeward Islands. The plantation owners from the Leewards conducted campaigns against the Kalinagos, but with limited success. The Kalinago took advantage of divisions between the Europeans. It was through the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle in 1748 that Britain and France settled on control of the Lesser Antilles, due to the formidable resistance mounted by their inhabitants Dominica and Saint Vincent were left as neutral islands, for the sole benefit of the Caribs. This treaty was violated first by the French and later by the British. The latter obtained possession in 1783, driving the Caribs from the calm Caribbean coast to the mountains and hostile Atlantic coasts of both islands. In 1797, 5,080 Caribs the majority of St. Vincent's population, were forcibly removed from the island by British troops and banished forever to Rotten Island, off the coast of the Republic of Honduras. The Guy Funos of Belize are their direct descendants today. The few Caribs who remained on St. Vincent were allocated 233 acres by the British government for their subsistence. In Dominica, the Caribs' loss of control of their lands had some similarities to the situation in St. Vincent, but they were not forced to migrate. By 1764 the Caribs had jurisdiction over only 232 acres in a remote area called Salibia on the Atlantic coast. But compared to their counterparts, 
the Tainos, it seems as if the Kalinago's hostile temperament served its purpose. Because more of their people and culture survived the numerous invasions. Today, the Kalinagos and their descendants continue to live in Dominica, their culture, dance and song, artistry, and daily living are still maintained by their descendants. If you visit Dominica you can visit the Kalinagos territory, home to the Kalinagos. Thank you for tuning in to Prehistoric, I'll be back to take you on another journey through history.